one aspect of that blue diagram, which I think is critically important when we, we start we'll thinking. Just pull that up quickly. I mean, it starts right at the bottom with, with economic activity. We really need to focus just, just on that part about, if we think purely about financial reporting, there's some kind of activity in the economy, right? Yeah. And so a key part, if you just talk about financial report, is sometimes we kind of start with the standards, but we're learning actually about the economic activity through the standards. So our yeah. perceptions and our understanding yeah. of how things economically work, how phenomena, mm. how phenomena play out in the real world, already actually comes filtered through that standard. Yes. And yeah. so an important role we have is to have a good understanding of the underlying economics. Yes. How do things work? Yeah, yeah. So I think one suggestion I would make really for your students is, you know, specifically with financial reporting, because obviously I'm, I'm, I'm in accounting, but is to sometimes you just need to step back, mm. right, from, okay, how do we account for this? And mm. ask yourself, what are we accounting for? Mm. And, yeah. and how does this work yeah. in practice, yeah. right? Yeah. Physically, how does this work? Yeah. How does this economically make sense? Yeah. And I think once you grasp the economics, mm. then the question comes up higher in that diagram to say, ah, okay, now I need to figure out yeah. as an accountant. And before just jumping into the standard, mm. ask, if, if I was the standard setter, yeah. how, how would I account for, for this transaction? How would mm. I account for this economic phenomenon? Mm. Um, what type of disclosures would I provide? So that the users of financial statements can get a good understanding of what happens in reality. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. That's what the standards are trying to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then sometimes you look at the standards or the result the standard gives, and you're like, this just doesn't make sense. That's right? not why. Why is, it, why is it this way? Yeah. And I think that it's also important to understand just the standard setting process and mm, yes. human beings are on board, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's also a political process. Sometimes we we get to a less than ideal answer because there was just political pressure, yeah. not to get to the ideal the ideal answer, or maybe it's yeah. too costly to implement. Obviously, in auditing, the the understanding of of the financial reporting process or the understanding yeah. of the financial reporting flow. So I often say to my students, you know, we we work backwards, like you say, we start with the standards and go the predefined categories of what everything must look like is already there. Right. And um, I generally give them example of like, if you imagine a whole, you know, all the transactions that take place in a business are just piles of paper. It's yeah. all just different piles of paper. And we go into the room with a predefined set of where those piles should already be. Yes. Because someone else has done the thinking around that, you know, if the pile looks like that, it belongs over there. If the pile looks yes. like that, it belongs over there. But we do very little thinking about the fact that in reality, all that's happened is a whole bunch of stuff has happened and you've got a whole bunch of paperwork so and true. a whole bunch of papers and someone's got to go in there and make sense of them. And there's mm -hmm. many more than, you know, there's many more ways that that could be done than just right. the standards that we have. But that's mm -hmm. now coming from the other side where you say, understand the economic activity, understand what the pieces of paper are, understand, you know, their characteristics, yeah. what makes them different, what makes them the same, and realize that someone, bunch of people, had to yeah. sit down and think like, how best can we categorize this? And then- yeah. You know, they came up with deferred tax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're a student and, you know, you're seeing a certain type of economic activity or transaction for the first time in an accounting or an auditing class, yeah. um, but it's not something that you've been exposed to, well, maybe go and Google a bit, you know, yeah. maybe if it is yeah. I4S9 um, or maybe chat GPT these days, right? <laughs> yep. Maybe if <laughs> it explore, is high yeah. nine, you know, what's the basics of how a bank works? Or yeah. because that's really going to make the understanding of the standards yeah. and how to apply them yeah. so much easier. Right? Yeah. If because you understand you that, that they're tools, right? And yes. again, this is something I say to my students is like, we learn these things like rules, if this, then yep. that, if this. But what we're not aware of and what a lot of them don't, they start by going, okay, I need to know the rules. I'm like, you need to take a step back and go, this was a tool that someone designed to solve a specific problem. If you yeah. can understand what that gap was, like what was going on? And I always use this example because it, it does sound like such a bizarre thing, but like what was going on in companies that a bunch of people sat down and was like, well, 
we need deferred tax. You know, deferred tax is the only way that we're going to solve this problem. Like, what was the gap? Like, what was the yep. shape of the problem yes. that someone decided deferred tax was the tool? Because yeah. if you understand, if you understand the shape of the problem and you understand, then you can understand the standard as a tool designed to solve that problem. And it's a lot easier to manipulate and work with a tool as Absolutely. opposed to having this like, you know, inflexible, like very rigid set yes. of rules that you can you can only manipulate it if you've seen that particular situation before you know right and and i, I like what you say and i'm the, the resources are so great to be able to to you know ask chat gpt like what is yeah. the problem <laughs> yeah. it's like that you know that that standard is intended to solve like what was going on yeah before that you know they didn't come in with the ten commandments yeah. So someone decided it was a good idea. You know? Right. Yeah, very, very true. And I, I think that, as I say, when you're in the midst of very hectic year and you, I mean, your your immediate goal is to pass the exam, you, you sometimes lose, lose just yeah. track of, of these important things. And in a way, it's unfortunate because yes. yeah. you lose, you, you then kind of steer over to the red diagram. <laughs> right but yeah it's, 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 the red diagram almost becomes a coping mechanism right but what's sad for me for that uh, about that is i think for many people that actually just kills their the interest and the passion yes. for counting it as does yeah understandable um, yeah and yeah part of it is because you know um you know the way we've assessed um these mm -hmm. these areas in the past has been very kind of detailed technical mm -hmm. orientated in terms of doing and getting it right and getting the numbers so that's that's part of it, um, but I mean we can we can still um, challenge ourselves to to kind of get to a higher yeah. bar in th thinking Absolutely. about these things and just yeah. putting it through the through the grinding mold. Yeah.